Hello and welcome back to Wild Sun Art Studio. My name is Robinson. Please do like, comment, subscribe, and share this video if you like this video, which I hope you will. So today we're going to play with some um, watercolor, putting watercolor on paper. Now there are lots of ways to do this. And I wish I th had thought of bringing that out. I did some watercolor hearts, and I don't know where they are, or I would go look for them. Oh, they're in a... That's where they are. Postcards, ATCs. They're in a folder somewhere, and I don't know where that folder is, or else I would find it for you. But anyway, I took my lovely watercolors, and I took a fairly small brush, and I painted some hearts, and I used a lot of watercolor on a dry piece of paper. and. That actually is a lot of fun and I highly recommend it. But another way to get just background paper that's kind of infused with a lot of color is you take a paintbrush and get some water on it. I don't know if you can tell if I've got um, enough water on here. And anyway, you just paint the whole piece of paper. This is called the wet on wet method. So you paint your watercolor paper all over with, um, whoops, sorry, uh, with just plain water. And then Let's use orange. Let's get a bunch of water in there and you stir around the color. I kind of like using a lot of color. Anyway, then you put this color on your paper and you see it's kind of melting into the um, melting into the water that's already on the paper and then if you want you can add some water to another color. And there's still enough water, so you can see the, the bleeding out. Sort of an unfortunate expression, isn't it? But um, the paint diffuses. That's a better word. Look at, look at this action going on. Maybe just for fun, put a little red in there and see what happens. Now, you'll see that we've still got some white lines here, and this paint actually got put on to be pretty dry. So the other thing you can do is take a water spritzer. I hope you're seeing what's going on here. Now one of the things that's true about watercolor paper is that um, it bends. Can you see that it's bending up from the table? Um, 
So that's sort of pushing all the color in the water down here. So what happens if we tilt this way? We really get all the water down there and then this way. You can see So anyway, I want color even on the edges. So I'm going to just take my wet paintbrush and it still has a little color in it and just color the very edges of the paper. And then I'm going to take this away and let it go dry. I'll be right back. other half of the paper and we'll do this again. So we used three colors, a very yellowy orange, and a kind of medium orange, and then a red. some brown. As you can tell, I rarely use brown. I don't know why I don't use these earth tones more. I might get kind of a you know, coffee stained paper look out of this. Let's try using this sort of tannish color. Boy, that's pretty yellow. Cool. And now what happens if I spray it a little? See how grainy it gets when you spray it? It's kind of cool. And it doesn't really dry that way, but it's fun to make that happen. Let's put on some more water so that it really runs. There, can you see it running? I'm going the other way. Running it to the top. Just so you know, another thing you can do is make kind of fingerprints in your paper and it makes these little splotchy marks. Now this is going to take a while to dry because I'm throwing so much extra water on it. But I just wanted to take the brush marks away a little bit. Bring some of that yellow and brown back down to the other side. So I'm going to leave that the way that it is. I'm going to take it over and 
let it dry. And I'm going to do a fun project with you. I don't know what I did with it, but I'll find it. All right. Oh, let's do that one. Now, is my table dry? It is, it is. I know we've done these paper chains before. This was kind of a fun piece of watercolor paper. Let me show you. I have a whole bunch of pieces of watercolor paper here. See how it dries with little like islands in the sun? Uh, this is the one that I wanted to show you. I have yellow on this side and I have purple and blue on this side. And what I did was I cut, I think it was quarter inch, but let me check. I cut a bunch of strips down the length and then I cut them in half and these are yeah these are half inch strips and I'm gonna make the chain out of the whole thing eventually not here but eventually and um, by the way checking on time. So um, I'm putting the yellow on the outside bend, as you can see, and then you see this little flash of purple coming from inside. Now watercolor is really um, stiff paper. It's really heavy paper so that it can bear up under the weight of all that um, water, not under the weight, but under the stress. So I'm sort of pre-bending it here. And then I'm going to get my glue, which I put over here. This is just white glue, just Elmore's. And I'm going to glue a little right here. Now, because this watercolor paper is so stiff and sturdy, if I link it together, it's going to take a minute for the white glue to kind of catch hold in a serious way. So I clip it with a um, clothespin. And then I just keep making my handmade paper chain with hand-painted watercolor paper. And I will keep on going. I have to find some place. Oops, wait. Link it. If you ever miss one, you can keep the chain and then link it with another. Link both with another. I'm sure you just got that, but just in case you didn't. If you sort of aren't paying attention quite because your thoughts start moving around and you make a link and it's mostly caught and you're thinking, oh no, if I take it apart, I'm going to tear it, blah, blah, blah. So just let that be the link and then we'll take another piece of paper another one of our skinny papers 
Well, by the way, this paper is bigger than eight and a half by 11. So these links are half an inch wide and five and a half inches um, long. So I've got the chain over here and this odd link that I let dry over here. So what you can do is link both links. And let those dry. And now this one over here becomes the last link. So yeah, I really like making my own um, paper for these paper chains. Because... First of all, you can choose what colors you use. So if you're doing something for a specific holiday or a friend who has favorite colors or um, some sort of school project, you know, and the school colors are red and black or whatever, um, then you can paint the paper whatever colors you like. Or maybe you're making a healing paper chain for all of your chakras. By the way, I've run out of the paper, the clothespins that I have, so that one's probably dry. And I'm going to take that clothespin from down here and put it up here at the end. Uh, yeah, so you could, if you were making a healing paper chain for your meditation space and, and you wanted to have, you know, your crown chakra, which is purple, your throat chakra, which is blue, and your heart chakra, which is green, and your um, solar plexus chakra, which is yellow. And let's see, and your sacral chakra, which is your belly, which is orange, and your root chakra, which is red. And you could make specific papers, maybe with a lighter and darker version of each color. Um, and you could make a paper chain that sort of flowed, and then you could hang it around you or something while you meditate. And it's a meditation to make... A paper chain too so it's just a win-win situation so I will continue this off camera but for now let's see if I can undo some of these I'm probably holding just fine there we go so I wish you all the colors you need to make your day exactly how you want it. I wish that for all of us, all the many colors, and I will see you next time with some more watercolor ideas. All right. Bye.